way to boost our immunity and um, be healthy. Uh, uh, is return to nature. We all know. So what is return to nature? We'll go into that. So let's go. Uh, some there was there were questions about circadian rhythm rhythms. Very fantastic question. Yes, circadian rhythm uh, affects our immunity for sure. If we are not regular, there have been fantastic researches, and we the science community, the medical science is very clear now that if you don't sleep at night, you are more prone to diseases, and you are more prone to NCDs, non-communicable diseases, as well as communicable diseases. So sleep is must, and there has been uh, numerous researches. And the latest one, I am talking about like uh, 2019. The research says not too much of sleep. Seven around seven to eight hours of sleep is very well. That's that's good enough. Okay. Uh, then um, seven to eight hours of sleep. Then. Uh, natural water. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about water and I also would like to focus on water. Which kind of water do we need to drink? Is it purified water? And I'm against purified water because there are a few researches that shows uh, purifying water the modern way, the modern western way uh, takes out all the essential nutrients, essential minerals and also there have been thousands of researches questioning the pH of water. We all know our body is uh, um, an alkaline medium and we need to maintain that with alkaline water. Always, always, always. And rather than any fancy reverse osmosis and other things, uh, I would prefer a candle filter and we all know uh, about COVID. COVID-19, many Many of the things are still unclear because this is very, very new thing for us. But one thing is clear, uh, COVID-19, the coronavirus cannot survive on copper for more than four hours. We know it for sure. It uh, will be alive on uh, papers and even on plastic materials for up to three days. So that shows uh, copper has got some uh, benefits so natural water candle filter that to spring water if possible otherwise tap water you just filter it uh, with a candle filter you get uh, uh, copper candle filters everywhere so you can use that and uh, dr. Uh, Raghavendra Rao has already told about the effect of uh, exercises so I would like to focus on exercise first exercise is not just doing yoga or just running or hitting the gym there are three kinds of exercises we all need to be clear okay the, the what, what is the most important exercise is according to researchers and according to medical science is cardio exercise we should depend upon cardio exercise up to 60 percent of the exercise should be cardio exercise cardio exercise means aerobic exercise that keeps your heart rate high that makes you gasping all these things and yoga I'd like to emphasize on yoga because yoga is such a beautiful thing you can modify the way you want you want resistance you re, if you want resistance training you can do it with yoga you want um, stretching you can do it with yoga you can uh, benefit the internal organs with yoga no matter what okay so yoga cardio and yoga then second thing is we need our body needs resistance training resistance training means uh, like weightlifting or walking in the garden or digging walking on the fields all these are resistance training okay so that uh, builds up your muscles and keeps your bones healthy and third you can talk about stretching but anyhow we can modify yoga the way we want so I'm not going into that very much and Dr. Murthy has already told about pranamas and kriyas. These are very much essential. Okay. So I'm not going to in depth with that. Uh, the Another part, what, what was missing was meditations. So there, um, we all know COVID-19 is a very new virus. 
Uh, we don't know how it's going to respond uh, to many of the things, including uh, pharmacotherapy. But meditation, we know, is excellent for balancing the immune functions. Okay? Uh, so I love to add meditations, and there are thousands of uh, types of meditation you can, mm, you can use any. Um, then another thing uh, I'd like to focus is uh, on vegetarianism. Yes, being vegetarian is very much essential. We already know, the science, medical science already knows that more than 70% of the virus diseases came from eating meat, came from animals. Right? More than 70%. It's a statistics given by WHO recently. So being vegetarian will help. No doubt. And also another uh, problem that uh, alters our immunity is uh, addiction. So we need to be addiction free. Doesn't matter whether it is alcohol, smoking, all those things. Because we all know this suppresses our immune reactions, immune functions, all those things. Uh, being vegetarian, you can already know about plenty of veggies, salads, fruits, all those things. Healthy routine should be always, always there should be a routine your body needs to follow, otherwise it gets exhausted. The moment you get exhausted, it's obvious that the immune function gets exhausted. So healthy routine should be there. It needs to cycle. It needs to be a healthy routine. And sun bath. I'd like to emphasize on sun bath because there have been thousands of thousands of research on sun bath and immune functions. Okay. So, uh, previously we used to believe that uh, morning sun bath used to be good, but now the science says, mainly in metros, because of the pollution, uh, what our body needs for vitamin D is UVB, ultraviolet B rays. And uh, we, the science knows clearly that ultraviolet B will be maximum in the noon. So, according to science, now 10 to 2 o'clock sun bath is excellent. And ultraviolet B cannot penetrate uh, the glass. So it, there should be direct contact to your skin. And there are many people who uh, take sun bath after using sunscreen. For our skin, it is very obvious that we don't need sunscreen. Okay. And there has been a research that uh, SPF 5. Nowadays in the market, you are using SPF 75. So the research says if you use SPF 5 on a skin, then your body, your skin will not be able to use, uh, will not be able to manufacture vitamin D for up to three months. So we need to be cautious. You can use sunscreen on your face, but not on your body. We don't need basically the wheat, the dark skin color uh, uh, filters. Uh, and there are very less, there are no chances of skin cancer as we are exposed to sun, as it is for the foreigners or albinos. Um, then we, we have talked about vegetarian diet. I'd also like to talk about not only vegetarian diet, like we need to also eat as less uh, um, uh, food, artificial foods as possible. Okay, we need to use high fiber diet and it needs to be balanced all the things and healthy balance. Uh, fasting a day every week is an excellent way to keep your immune functions optimum. Uh, Dr. Janak will be addressing on that, I hope. So I'll talk less about fasting, but fasting is fantastic on killing uh, and keeping your immune system balance and optimum. Uh, positive thinking, yeah. The immune function starts from here too. This has got fantastic results on immune function. Uh, let me tell you flatly, the difference between a poor and rich, a talented and non-talented, a successful and unsuccessful, and also a diseased and a healthy person. The difference is over here. So positive thinking helps. So. Um, this is the, uh, I've just summarized few of the lifestyle changes that uh, our body needs. And I'd like uh, you to see on the screen, I've uh, shown you a small um, uh, research paper on microbial exposure during early life. You can see 
there have been many hypotheses including uh, BCG vaccine and other things but what why we are so immune why less people are dying in Asia is because we are exposed to micro uh, microbes early in life because uh, Dr. Rajesh and we, we were in UK for, uh, in the Virgin Islands for almost seven years. And I'll tell you, we did not have no fever for seven years. We didn't have no cough for seven years. We didn't have no cold for seven years. So in the West, it is very difficult to get exposed to all these pathogens. Over here in Indian subcontinent, we are exposed to cold virus, influenza virus, rhinovirus, all these things. So that has kept our immunity a little bit high. So that could be one of the reasons. This is one of the hypotheses I am uh, uh, putting on, but there, this is research bad. You can see on the screen, uh, microbial exposure during early life has got persistent effect till your death on natural killer T cells function and this applies to the virus too. Okay, so we are lucky. Let's say we are lucky. And today we are, I was supposed to focus on superfoods. Okay, what are the superfoods? Uh, superfoods are the foods that are used by the centenarians. Like, uh, I've researched extensively for almost 10 years uh, in those areas where people live more than 100 or more than 90. And these are the foods they eat a lot. And their immune function is high. That's why this is, called, this is lead to the longevity also. So the superfoods, we are going to the superfoods like green foods, veggies and salads, fruits and nuts on three, uh, fermented foods, germinated foods, colostrum, whole grains and legumes. So we already know and Dr. Janak will be talking on this, uh, veggies and salads, so I'll not be touching that part. I'll just show you a few slides. Uh, fruits and nuts, he'll be touching on that, so I'll not touch that part. Germinated foods, Dr. Murthy has already ta talked about that. Uh, whole grains and legumes, Dr. Janak, he's, uh, he'll tell you about that. So I'll talk regarding a few more interesting points. Mm. So green foods, let's talk about green foods because very less people will be talk about, talking about this. What are the green foods? Let's be very clear. The green foods are divided into two chapters. One, um, wheat grass, barley grass, all these things. And second is seafood, seaweeds. Okay, so there are many things, there have been many researchers uh, telling you the efficiency of uh, uh, green foods on uh, immune function. So the current one you are seeing on the screen is uh, uh, the active oligosaccharides isolated from wheat grass and that can lead to uh, immune functions, uh, balancing the immune function and enhancing it against the virus as well. So let's go about this green foods. Uh, we know about wheat and uh, barley grass, but we don't know about many other things that are called seaweeds, like blue-green algae, you can see on the screen, spirulina, wakami, kelp, nori, hijiki, all these are called seaweeds. Uh, these are used basically in Japanese foods, okay? Uh, if you go to Japanese restaurants, they wa wrap the rice into, one, uh, into a green film, that, those are called... Uh, uh, nori hiski, okay, the blue green algae leaf. They are highly nutritionally concentrated form of food, okay. They've got fantastic amount of chlorophyll, fibers, almost all amino acids, omega 3 antioxidants, minerals, including selenium and iodine, that are very much essential for our immune functions. Uh, Dr. Raghavendra has already talked about that. And there, uh, there are many researches regarding. Uh, how super seaweed, the seaweed stimulates our immune function and on virus as well. Uh, on the screen you can see uh, the seaweeds uh, can also have anti-HIV effects. Okay, so it, it has got some antiviral uh, functions as well, I believe so. So, um, uh, but about Corona, uh, about COVID-19, we don't know anything about it yet. But I believe so there should be because if it can act against HIV, it should be able to act against um, COVID-19 as well. So about veggies, uh, we know about veggies and Dr. Janak will be talking about veggies. But right now I'll tell you 
Allium group, we should not forget, these are antivirals. I am focusing you on antiviral veggies. Okay, onion, garlic, all the bulbs and leaves, okay, are excellent antivirals. Capsicum, all the capsicum group are excellent antivirals. And watercress, watercress, what do you call Rajas watercress in Hindi? So that many people should know. This is available, this is a vegetable that grows on all wetlands. This has got round, thick, wet leaves. Uh, we call, uh, in, in Nepal, we call that uh, Pani Ghas or it grows on the... Uh, it's excellent. And according to the researches, this is the second best food ever on, in the world. The first is being almond, the watercress is another. This is available all over the world, uh, no matter wherever the, you go. If there is some small pod, it starts growing automatically, watercress. Uh, you can Google if you are not um, very clear on watercress. So the second uh, is fruit, seasonal fruits. Uh, and I like to focus on acai fruit and berries, which has got fantastic functions, fantastic, helpful, very much helpful for our immune function as well. And we all know about dried fruits and nuts. Uh, beta carotene, vitamin C, E, uh, all these things Dr. Janak will be talking on. And if you'd like to, if you'd like some references or research papers, I'm, I'll be happy to provide you that as well. Uh, let's go to another interesting chapter is fermented foods. Okay. Uh, fermented foods. Uh, many people don't know about fermented foods, but I, I um, was born in India and grew up in Nepal, and so I know fermented foods in Nepal has got fantastic variety of fermented foods. So what are the fermented foods? Let's go to that. Okay. In India, we use very less fermented foods, so we need to focus. I am going to focus on this uh, chapter a little bit more. Uh, these are also called bioactive and functional foods. Okay, so yogurt is a uh, fermented food. Dosa and idli batter is a fermented food. All the prebiotic, probiotic, all the bacteria that are very much essential and very much helpful for us are called uh, fermented foods. Okay, uh, so but when we cook dosa and idli, I feel um, I've had. Reference uh, few reference to the researches as well. Uh, the scientists believe the good bacteria get killed. So maybe you can just taste a little bit of idli and dosa batter after it gets fermented. Uh, here we are talking about bacterial fermentation. These are called uh, uh, these are called bacterial fermentation, and these prebiotic and probiotics are available in buttermilk. Buttermilk is one of the best food we use in India. But we don't use many other fermented food that are essential. Uh, tofu is also a fermented food that's excellent. Uh, have you heard about fermented bamboo shoots? That's excellent fermented food as well. Here you just take a baby small bamboo shoot. You cut it whenever um, the bamboo is around one or two feet. And you slice it up and put it on a vessel and keep it on the sun after 5-10 days, it gets fermented, it has got very sour taste, okay? This is because of the lactobacillus, a variety of lactobacillus fermentation. It has got prebiotics, probiotics, everything. And the same thing applies to fermented veggies as well. You just pluck all whatever the veggies you want. In Nepal, they use uh, mainly tori. Tori is, uh, what do you call, uh, mustard, mustard greens, okay? And they also use, basically after e eating radish, we throw out the leaves. But you can collect those leaves and uh, take a vessel, push it and keep it over there uh, and let it ferment. You don't have to use anything. You don't have to use no bacteria, mm, uh, nothing. You don't have to use nothing. You just push it nicely and uh, cover the cap and keep it uh, on the sun and after a few days it starts oozing out that means it's fermenting inside so that's the way to ferment veggies and after that you can cook make a soup out of it or you can dry in the Himalayan region uh, in Nepal they dry these fermented vegetables it has got 
thousands of varieties of uh, bacteria, lactobacillus uh, strains, and uh, the spores which can, after entering into our, into our body, it works as a fantastic uh, formatted bioactive and functional. So there, uh, you, there is also a trend uh, I found in Himalayan countries, uh, including Nepal, they make urdal veggie chunks. So you can use any vegetable you want and uh, you mix urdal, urdal and then make chunks and let it dry. Let it ferment and dry in the sun. And whenever there is nothing available, you can use that as a vegetable. Uh, khalpi. Khalpi is another thing. Um, I think everyone know about some pickle, pickling the ripe uh, cucumbers. The brown ripe cucumbers. If you pickle it, it starts fermenting. It has got sour taste. That's called khalpi. And abroad, like in um, Turkey, Egypt, China, Japan, Korea, all these people use kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, natto, dauchi, hamchoi, temp. These are fermented pickles. These are also available in your supermarket. And these are excellent immunomodulators. Okay, this is stimulate and balance our immune system because 90% of our immune system is based on our guts, in our intestines. We need to remember that. The immune system lies in our stomach. So and it also uh, the if your gut bacteria is healthy that also enhances your functioning of your brain as well. There are many neurological disorders and immune uh, confusion that are treated by these foods. Uh, we know we just don't need to stimulate or hyper stimulate our immune system because that can lead to another um, autoimmune disorders. So we need to balance and. Autoimmune disorders are very difficult to treat. These foods will be very much essential for that as well. Not only balancing our immune system for COVID. So all this uh, research paper you can um, go through. Eating fermented food can give you a boost to your immune system. All this. There are many research papers available uh, online. There is a uh, scientist, Dr. Tamang in India. He is very famous on uh, doing researches on this group as well. He has been using fermented foods for treating gastrointestinal disorders, including ulcers, everything. Uh, the last and very interesting, another immune boosting food we are talking about is colostrum. Um, I hope everyone knows about colostrum. Do you? Colostrum, uh, after giving birth, all mammals, after giving birth to a baby, will the mother will ooze out very high fat, high protein uh, milk for one to three days that is called colostrum i don't know about you but i've seen many communities in india and in nepal after the cow gives birth to a baby they milk the uh, cow and the whole community shares that colostrum it's spreading that immunity to the whole village and we already know because colostrum has got high amount of IgG, immunoglobulins, that immunoglobulins are essential uh, for the baby's health. Okay, that's how, that's why we always promote uh, um, breastfeeding our kids because all the immunity, all the things that mother is exposed to is uh, that goes that uh, goes to their blood, uh, that goes to their breast milk, and in turn, the new babies, the infant gets that immunity from the mother. So, colostrum is one of the very much essential things, essential foods for uh, our immune system. And how to how to use it? Uh, this COVID uh, era, I've tried colostrum three times. And it, 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 it is excellent. And there have been thousands of researches, if you Google, um, the effects of bovine immunoglobulins on our immune functions. I don't know about it works, whether it works for COVID, but I, I am uh, very much positive it might. Because there have been researches that it works for allergies, it works for infections, viral infections. 
So I, for, I hope for COVID as well. So we can use colostrum, cow colostrum. Uh, the first day uh, when the cow give, gives birth to the baby, you collect the milk, keep for the kid, keep for the calf, but collect, uh, there will be lots of amounts. First day there will be like five, ten times the amount uh, of the regular uh, yield. So collect some, uh, then you can filter that under aseptic precautions, you can drink that directly. Okay? Uh, many uh, communities, they boil that milk and when it solidifies, they use sugar and use that, but I'm against that. Uh, it's better to drink the colostrum directly from the cow without cooking. And that has got tremendous effect on our immune functions as well. Colostrum has got all the immunoglobulins, growth factors, vitamin A, E, C, copper, zinc and antioxidants. So this can be another fantastic foods. So whole grains to boost immune functions, uh, Dr. Janak will be talking on that. Uh, if uh, time permits, uh, I can also share about Ayush recommendations for immunity uh, like Indu Kantaras, uh, Kasaya, Agastha Rasayan, Yoga and Natural Lifestyle, Churn Pras, Amla Kiryasayan, Turmeric Milk. Uh, the Ayush research uh, core team, uh, I think, uh, um, produced this. So if, I hope if you Google, you'll find, but I've uh, uh, summarized three researches uh, on COVID by Ayush. So this has got everything like for clinical support. If somebody has got COVID, what? Uh, like gooseberries, tulsi, ginger, lemon, turmeric, 200 ml BD for adults, 100 ml for kids, yoga therapy, sunbath, naturopathic treatments. Dr. Murthy has already uh, talked about that. For irritation, if you have got throat irritation, salt, turmeric, and tulsi gargle, and there are some uh, herbals, herbal preparations, Ayurvedic preparations, bresol, haridrakhan for upper respiratory tract allergies, frequent hot water, hot water with honey, kasaya, and kara made out of guduchi, chari, uh, chiraita, tulsi, turmeric, jeera, clove, lemon, all those things. I think uh, hot lemon, ginger, honey also helps. And for convulsions, if you are recovering, then dasbulak, uh, Kachutraim Kasaya, Indu Kantam Kasaya, uh, all these things, Rasayan Chikitsa, UN Natural Lifestyle, all these things uh, Ayush is recommending. Uh, we need to know is balancing immunity or enhancing our immune function or modulating the immune functions is not like it, it can happen overnight. You need to maintain that all over your life. So there is no alternative about balancing your lifestyles and dietary habits habits it doesn't happen overnight and we need to know there are more dangerous pathogens than COVID-19 so we need to get ready for that as well and natural lifestyle is the only key we need to balance it's I don't believe in like uh, stimulating the immune function I believe in balance balance is uh, health uh, you might need minor amounts of poisons as well in your body right so it's about not uh, only enhancing the function also by a balance so artificial lifestyle artificial food stress we know leads to overactive immune function that also can lead to uh, um, that also can lead to you getting exposed uh, to other diseases as well also viva uh, also covid 19 so that summarizes my um, uh, presentation so let's see uh, if there are any questions, Dr. Rajesh?